So the first thing we need to do is to create the hood for the fit test that each person will wear while they are getting fit tested. And this is the final product of what it should look like. Now this is the solution um, that we're putting in this, like it looks like a little pumper. That will go into the hood and it has like a citrusy taste to it. And then here I am and I have the hood on. I'm supposed to just relax with my mouth a little bit open. It's kind of freaking out for a minute. Um, and my my coworker, there's a little hole in the hood. My coworker is squeezing that citrusy solution in there and I am supposed to let them know when I start to taste the citrusy sensation. And so it took me 24 pumps before I tasted the sensation. So now I have the N95 mask on and my loading dose is 30 because it took me 24 pumps to finally taste the citrus. So they are pumping the citrus in there every 30 seconds, I believe. And we just want to make sure that I don't taste the citrusy sensation again. I was kind of starting to get claustrophobic with the hood on. The mask is very tight and there is like literally no ventilation. And you can't hear, but all my coworkers are laughing behind me. So continuing on, every 30 seconds, they are injecting half the number of squeezes of the test solution to maintain the appropriate concentration of aerosol in my hood. <laughs> I'm having a very difficult time remaining calm as they are doing this, as you can see. But I'm just supposed to do normal breathing, deep breathing, moving my head back and forth, moving my head side to side. And all of this is to just make sure that I don't taste that citrusy taste and the mask is working correctly. Okay, and here's what the N95 mask on its own without the hood looks like. So I was appropriately fitted for that size. I wrote my name on it because one person gets one mask and we also got a brown paper bag to keep our mask in when it's not in use. And here one of my coworkers is showing how to properly put the mask on. You can see the bottom string goes on afterwards and goes behind your neck. Funnily enough, we found out that men with shave with beards greater than one day's growth are not able to be fitted for these N95 masks because it breaks the seal. So unfortunately, Renato here did not get his mask. What we usually use on my unit are called pappers. Um, so here we're gonna demonstrate how to put a papper on and what it looks like in comparison to the N95 mask. I believe that the pappers are more expensive than the N95 masks. It is not realistic to have every employee have their own papper with this COVID-19 crisis, which is why we are all being fitted for N95 masks. Also, if someone is coding or needs immediate attention, it is a lot harder for healthcare employees to put on a bunch of these papper when they could just put on a regular N95 mask. So here I am putting together the papper. It also has a hood that goes around my face. This portion gets put around your stomach like a belt and you fit it to your waist. And then the hood just goes over your head. If I was actually going into a patient room right now, I would make sure my hair was up in a bun so it wasn't exposed. There you go. And then we would wear yellow gowns over that and gloves, of course, to protect the equipment. And here is just a demonstration of how we store the pappers on our unit. We have about four to five of these um, placed throughout the unit. And then we just have particular signs because we have to wear these pappers if a patient is getting an aerosol treatment, we have to wear it for 60 minutes afterwards. 
and there are signs that respiratory needs to put up and here are all the aerolyzing treatments that we should be on alert for. And this is how you properly take off, which is called doffing your equipment. When you take off your equipment, that is when you are at highest risk for um, contracting an infectious disease like that virus. So yeah, that was basically it. It was quite the experience getting fitted for this N95 mask.